I'm very pleased today to be with Dr. Mario Capecchi, who is the 2007 Nobel Prize winner in physiology or medicine. He just gave us a fabulous presentation, um, very interesting, very stimulating as far as new questions and things like that. I was fascinated during your talk about how you updated your methods. Um, the newest thing, you seem to be incorporating that into your work. Technology is what makes science not go smoothly up, but all of a sudden jump. <laughs> because now you can see things, do things that you couldn't before. So I always keep an eye on everything that's going on. In fact, I send my students to meetings that have nothing to do with what they're working on, just to see what's going on in that field that would be useful. And again, it's always technology. And, and utilizing it in a new way to address your own questions but then uh, using it also to address questions that nobody else is asking. So I think that, uh, that's the power of technology that allows you now to expand uh, whatever you've been doing beyond that particular uh, barrier. And the other aspect of that is if the technology doesn't exist, then make it exist, okay? invent it. And that was true with uh, gene targeting, uh, being able to change any gene in any way that we wanted to. I knew the need was there, but nobody had any idea of how to do that, and I didn't have any idea. And it took a period over 10 years to actually figure out how to do it. But I had the confidence that it was doable. And I used nature as my guiding principle. Can nature do it? If nature can do it, I know it can be done. I simply don't know how, <laughs> and I have to figure out how. What is the biggest challenge that you have faced um, over the years with your research? We like to work on the edge. And sometimes, uh, for example, funding institution, American Heart Association, not included, are very conservative. In fact, the American Heart Association actually supported me as I just began my career. So I'm very indebted to them. Um, but I think it, it's always trying to get across uh, novel things that uh, people are sort of resistant. They're comfortable sitting in front of a TV and watching whatever's happening, uh, rather than extending their minds and taking in new ideas. And I think that's probably the biggest challenge I've had, and I've had it over and over. <laughs> Not once, but several times. You have trained numerous um, junior faculty, postdocs, graduate students over the years. What's your advice to junior people? You really have to let them go. I mean, uh, I think it's, you know, you can provide advice, but what, they, what you're trying to do is prepare them for the future, because they're going to take over the future. Mm -hmm. They're the next. And so I think what you want to develop is uh, that for them to become independent uh, investigators. And I think that's my main role is simply to guide them and encourage them. So, what question have you still not had a chance to answer that you're dying to answer? <laughs> a scientist, yesterday doesn't count, it's always tomorrow, but today. And so what I'm thinking about is exactly what I'm working on, and that's the most exciting thing always. Uh, and I have thousands of questions, of which I will only be able to approach a few. <laughs> And so you have to be selective and hope. You know, nature is enormously complex, but at the same time, really beautiful. And so what we really want to know is how she does it, as opposed to how we would do it. She's uh, had billions of years of experience and has spent a lot of time making sure that things work. And that's her guiding principle. Does it work or doesn't it work? If it works, continue and use it even for new applications. And if it doesn't work, forget about it. And I think our challenge is always to figure out how she thinks, that is Mother Nature, as opposed to how we think. Thank you very much for your time this morning. Again, fabulous lecture, and uh, enjoy the rest of the AHA meeting. Well, thank you. Thank you. Great meeting. Thank you.